So hey everyone, uh, I'm Saptarshi Banerjee, I'm a Senior Solutions Architect in AWS, and today I have Ned with me from Coalfire. Thanks for having me, Septo. Uh, my name is Nathan Demuth, I'm Coalfire's Vice President of AI Security and Trust Engineering. First question for you, so what's an example of a security and privacy enhanced agenting workflow that you have built or helped a customer build? Yeah, uh, great question. We, we have an awesome example for this. Uh, we, we recently had a customer who came to us who was looking to build an agent that was capable of helping uh, offload the, the effort associated with IT ticket processing, triaging, routing, and et cetera. And so the, the way it looked for them is they ultimately, you know, starting with the user, um, the user would submit into a ticketing application. And then that ticketing application on the back end was connected to an LLM. And then they had, in, in the middle of this process, along the way, uh, you know, they had um, an LLM guard that effectively was helping as a kind of a monitoring and content filtering along the way. Uh, in order to, in this case, their main concern was to prevent PII from either getting into the tickets and making them way to the LLM, or uh, potentially the LLM finding PII somewhere within the tools that it was accessing and pushing it on the way out. Cool. Thanks, Ned, for the explanation. Um, so, next question for you. So, what types of what types of issues were they experiencing when they reached out to you? They were experiencing a lot of issues. So if I come over here, uh, the, the types of issues they were experiencing was, first and foremost, was accuracy, or just quality. Um, they were finding that the agent was not reliably producing the right kind of content for the tickets. Uh, hallucinations were, were occurring and kind of garbling up what the ticket was. They were mishandling um, the, the flow and the, the orchestration that they were attempting to perform um, by loading a lot of things into the prompt. The other thing was their latency and their cost. Uh, they were finding from a latency perspective that the ability to evaluate the tickets and then you know triage and, and reply to them was taking a lot longer than what, what humans were even kind of doing in, in a lot of cases, or just the costs. Uh, they were running into basically running up on their limits and consuming all of their tokens as part of these processes. And then, you know, for us, for sure, the last was uh, security and privacy violations. Uh, they found that the, you know, the uh, high probability that ultimately a user was in some way, shape, or form able to sneak or, or you know, intentionally or unintentionally PII into the tickets and the LLM would catch it or the LLM would grab it and push it out in tickets without realizing it. So, you know, thanks for explaining that. Uh, I'm also curious, you know, what patterns or design primitives ensure that the workflow adheres to requirements and, and your expectations? Sure thing. Um, there's there's a lot that will go into it, but we we strongly recommend clients do because it's exactly the types of things that are going to help us um, resolve a lot of these issues in reliability and, and particularly reliability around security and privacy. So the way that we will define this with our customers is first we'll talk about separation of concerns. So what do I mean by separation of concerns? We will go over with the customer and we will define the specific use cases that they're going to have the agent perform. So literally in this case, sit down and look at the broader business uh, process. Okay, ticketing, uh, ticketing process. Um, but we'll then try to chunk that down into what we call agent departments. where we treat every single step inside that broader process almost as if it's going to be a, a different department or a different segmentation all the way down to the point of separation of roles and responsibilities. 
And really what we're attempting to do here is we're attempting to decouple uh, what we kind of call any all agents down into more of an agent crew where we can then create what we call the agent construct where we're able to effectively micro configure or micromanage what the different agents are going to do in order to start getting at um, per, you know improving a lot of these things particularly accuracy latency and cost and so what that agent construct looks like is effectively for each micro agent we look at the LLM we try to understand what LLM is proper and, and effective for the particular subtask that's going to be performed we'll take a look at the tools and resources that it needs to access so in this case, right, you have the ticketing system, uh, but you might also have some kind of policy database. Uh, you might have some CI tools, depending upon the, the nature of the integration. Um, but we sit and we try to look at what tools and resources. We then go into the tasks and instructions that this uh, microagent is going to get. We'll go into memory. And then last but not least, we'll do prompt strategy. And effectively what we're trying to get, you know, our customers and partners to understand is that they have to take this larger business process. They have to chunk it down into sub processes, sub tasks, such as the initial, uh, an initial micro agent, for example, that might review a ticket for completeness will be separate from another micro agent that will then evaluate the ticket and determine a triage category, which will be different from another agent that will then make the determination for where it needs to route accordingly. And every single one of these micro agents might have its own separate LLM based upon the nature of the tasks. It will have its own specific access to the tools and resources, task instructions in memory. Um, from a security perspective, this also helps with separation of duties and lease privileges as well. So now we're, we're moving not just from accuracy, latency, and cost, and we're getting into the security and privacy. And then for each one of these things, uh, we go through and we're performing evaluations. So we're, we have evaluations for what model works, what tools, resources, what tasks, what memory, and what prompt strategy. And we version this whole stack. So you can run evaluations and you can make micro tweaks to every single thing in here like it's, like it's a different knob. Uh, we will also then take into consider things like uh, security and privacy enhanced prompt engineering and context engineering. This will be things like making sure that when you're defining the prompt uh, it, or when you're defining the agent and you're defining the persona and the tone and the roles and the instructions, you're always making sure that you have a call out to security policies. And those policies definitely shouldn't be in the prompt itself. They can be in a vector DB that is called to and injected at runtime. Uh, then you have two forms of security. We refer to as variable security and runtime secure or fixed security, sorry. Both of these are at runtime. So with fixed security, this is gonna be a lot of your traditional things like authentication, authorization, logging, encryption requirements, API rate limiting, and so forth. With variable security, it depends upon the agent. Uh, for example, uh, if we have a prompt strategy that includes the agent doing like a chain of thought where it has to think ahead and plans, will specifically tell it to think about whether or not there needs to be additional steps based upon the context from a security and privacy perspective. So that's actually something that's going to be happening at runtime that the agent will be thinking about. And again, you'll have refer a referral back to maybe a policy or a DB or a vector DB rather um, for grounding that. And then the, the last thing that we have is also gate checks within the prompt and feedback loops. 
So gate checks would just be kind of very rigid before something goes into the agent or something comes out of the agent. Um, it would be something, whether it's another agent in the form of an LLM or whether it's a, a tool that's based inside the code or whether it's a, sur a solution within AWS such as Amazon, Bedrocks, uh, guardrails. Uh, we'll, we'll have those different types of things integrated that performs those checks. And so by, by going through this process, you have really the ability to understand what your output needs to look like in terms of accuracy, latency, cost, security, and privacy. And you have a whole host of different bells and whistles or knobs and dials rather that you can adjust in order to hone in on the types of business objectives you're trying to get there with those uh, KPI threshold. Tell me more about how you implement it using AWS for your customer. Sure thing. So for us, really the objective was to take these design patterns and imprint them down onto their use case and enhance it. And fortunately, Amazon has a whole load of capabilities that helped us do that. The two main services that we used were Amazon Bedrock, and Amazon Bedrock Agent Core. So again, if we kind of start down here with what it originally looked like, the first thing that we got the customer to understand again based upon this was that we actually needed multiple instances depending upon the task, if these boxes will represent effectively kind of the agent coming across. Um, in their case, they were using a third party LLM. Uh, we found that a lot of the tasks that they were trying to accomplish were actually very much better suited when it came to evaluations with Nova. And so we worked with them to understand how uh, going through different evaluations and testing that NOVA was able to increase the accuracy, reduce the latency, and reduce the costs associated with a lot of different tasks. Uh, from there, we, we worked to help them implement a few more things. We used Amazon Bedrock Agent Core's gateway in order to introduce additional MCP tool calls to things like DLP solutions that they were able to use to detect um, on input and output whether or not PII was being snuck in. So instead of just putting all the pressure on the LLM guard that they had in place, being able to, to leverage uh, that gateway and the ability to call that into the orchestration for th something like a DLP tool call. Uh, the other thing that we did is we showed them that with the ability to break this up into multiple agents, you were able to use additional capabilities such as flow and uh, runtime within Amazon Bedrock Agent Core and Amazon Bedrock in order to create more sophisticated agentic workflows and introduce the concept of orchestration agents versus routing agents versus evaluator agents and to integrate some of these gate checks and feedback loops to create a more kind of robust process for how tickets were evaluated and how things like uh, security and privacy were going to be vetted. Uh, the other thing that we did is we helped them implement uh, again, through Amazon Bedrock and Amazon Bedrock Agent Core, we had things like Knowledge Base. And memory in order to be able to effectively store policies and keep those policies from a security and privacy perspective. Uh, within the context and within the prompt engineering at runtime, so there was additional grounding. And so ultimately what we helped them do is kind of create this defense in depth that was that once you start stacking these things on, using Gateway to integrate MCP calls for DLP tools, using flows to achieve more sophisticated orchestrator, router, uh, gate checks, feedback loop, worker optimizer type patterns, uh, continuing to leverage the LLM guard that they had, but then having reference to policies within the knowledge base and splitting this out, we were able to help them significantly overcome a lot of these issues that they were experiencing. 
Thank you, Ned. Thanks for the detailed explanation and uh, how are you leveraging our AWS AI services like Bedrock to build your architecture. Thank sure you thing. for thank you for being here and thank you. Thank you, Sam.